So this is me starting out by just making a small cast, and this is more of a test for me so that I could test out my scale sheet, and I was also mixing plaster so that I could test out my clay and make a small fin. So when you're mixing plaster, you're going to want to mix about one part plaster to one part water, and you have about six minutes working time before it will begin to set and you'll have to start mixing in more water and it's even less if you are making more of a smaller batch. So when mixing it, you're going to want to make sure that water and plaster is fully incorporated and mixed together, otherwise you'll get lots of small little clumps and bubbles and those can cause a lot of problems. So this is me tapping it down because you're going to want to make sure to get all the bubbles up and when you put down your foam scale sheet, make sure it's coated in oil. That way it will come off and you won't have any problems. I chose to use the Finis Rapid Monofin because I liked the stability and the size of it. So when choosing your fin shape, look at a lot of pictures online, kind of just decide what you want. And the way that I did it was I taped four poster boards together and I looked at a lot of pictures and then I took a pencil and I traced it out. And then when I found one I wanted, I cut it out and or I traced it out with marker and I cut it to, to the size that I wanted. When choosing a clay to work with, the first thing that you're going to want to make sure is that it's not water-based and that it will not dry, and you're also going to want to make sure that it is sulfur-free. So the clay that I chose ended up not working out the best for me because since it was so heavily wax and oil-based, it was really hard and difficult to blend. So what I had to do was I had to take the little two-pound blocks and I had to melt them on the stove in a pot and then pour them onto a cookie sheet. I then took the sheets and then fit them over my mold and I had to use a heat gun in order to blend it all together and I, it actually proved really difficult but the end result wasn't as bad as I was thinking it would be because I had already spent a lot of money on clay so I figured I might as well just go through with it. I used the Del Milano clay and it was good in the end because the way that it cools it becomes really really hard. So the plaster cast ended up really nice, but I want to say it took me like more than 24 hours in total to do the entire tail, blending, smoothing, and detailing. I liked the shape of the spines and it took me forever to blend these together. If I didn't have help from a few people, I never would have got it done, it never would have been smooth, but I'm really happy with the end result. So the frame for your plaster mold, it could be wood, I originally bought plywood to set it on but then I decided it would be easier to do it with the cardboard box that my monofin came in. So I started mixing plaster together, and yes that is a broom handle because that was what was easiest for me. And I made sure to do my best to get all the clumps out. And one thing you're going to want to do that's really important is make sure to brush your tail with oil or Vaseline. I use coconut oil because if not, it's going to be really difficult to get out of the plaster. So the heat gun I'm using, that was just to soften up the oil because it did harden a little bit. And another thing that's really important when pulling your plaster is to leave it alone. Don't touch it. I know it's hard, but you just cannot touch it. You're going to want to make sure that you also have something to support your plaster. 
I ended up using the padding for a carpet because it was meshy and plasticky and it worked out really well. You can also use chicken wire or I've heard tool works really well. Anything really that will give your plaster enough support that it will not crack. Especially with the size of mine, I did have a little bit of cracking issues. So if I didn't have the support, I'm sure it would have cracked directly in half. So make sure to let your plaster sit for at the very least a few hours. And I did forget to take a picture of it, but there is some more detailing in it. When mixing your silicone, you're going to want to make sure to mix it one to one, just like the plaster. And I used about, I think, eight cups in total on just one side. But the reason for that is because I actually bought two gallons of plaster. I bought two of the units, which was about $500, because I really wanted to just do it right rather than skimp a little bit. So I added a little bit of gold mica powder as well as the silk pig dye and I really liked this look because it added a lot of shimmer and it gave it some depth. Before your silicone dries, you're going to want to make sure to add your base to your silicone. I choose to use Power Mesh because it works out really well and I didn't really like the thickness of neoprene, but make sure to add this while it's still wet, otherwise it will never stick. After I pulled my silicone pieces out of the mold, I decided to paint them. And the way that I did this was I just painted with silicone because the only thing that will ever stick to silicone is silicone. And after that, I brushed it with a nice clear coat to give it a good shine. And if you want to add glitter at that point, that's when you should add it. So after I let those set for a couple of hours, I decided to go ahead and start putting them together. So I started by putting my monofin down, and then I pinned all the sides together very tightly. And then I'm going to start painting with silicone. The, that way your two sides will stick together. I dyed the silicone that I painted with, but using clear will be just fine. I have also heard that sil silicone caulking will work, but I just went ahead and used the Dragon Skin Medium 10. Now, when you're pinning this together, you're going to want to make sure that you leave holes in the places that you pin it at the bottom. This way, water can rush out, otherwise your tail will fill up with water and you'll have to keep stopping and emptying it out. So make sure that you leave some nice holes in it so that that way it can... That way it, the water will be able to drain out efficiently. I just stuck some glitter glue pens in there because they were nice and round and circular, but you can use really anything. 